the Fisher Transform Indicator is touted by many as being able to be a leading indicator. And it is actually very interesting. I've played around with this for quite a while. So first things first, it was created by John Ellers. And what he is attempting to do with the mathematics of this is to convert prices into a Gaussian normal distribution. So basically trying to take the noise out of the market and normalize the price action, which is very important. If you can really do that, that is very, very powerful. So how do we trade this puppy dog? Well, first of all, um, the reason I'm doing this video is in response to a question. One of the uh, YouTube subscribers said, hey, um, are there any oscillators that are not bounded? We know RSI is bounded, um, stochastic is bounded, has an artificial floor, artificial ceiling, can't go beyond those levels. And so really this is in response to that. And if you want me to answer questions via of YouTube videos in the future, feel free to type your uh, request down in the bottom in the comments or wherever you can on the page you're watching this video. And I'll definitely consider it. So this came as one of those. And the question is, are there any unbounded indicators? Well, yeah, the Fisher Transform is one of them. So there is really no uh, limit to how high or high, how low it can go. So here's what I look for. Okay, and there's different ways to do this, more than one way to groom a cat, as uh, they say. So remember what it's doing, taking the noise out of the market and um, plotting normal distribution. And so here's what we got. We got a lower low here, equal low on the Fisher Transform Index. So what that means is, potentially means, is that um, there could be a lot of a random or um, out of sample data here that is not um, normal part of the distribution because this is what it would look like um, normalized. And this could therefore be uh, considered oversold. All right, on a lot of um, indicators that are bounded and they have levels that are overbought, oversold, whether it's 30 and 70, 20 and 80, whatever, uh, that's very artificial. I do not consider those overbought and oversold levels. So this doesn't really have levels for overbought, oversold. Again, it can go really high, it can go really low, it can go above four, it can go below two. But what we're looking for is when we talk about oversold relative to its past, in price action. And so therefore this in a different way, not just a line on the chart, that shows that, okay, we may be um, oversold here because there's a lot of random price action down here that is not part of the normalized curve. Same up here, we come up here, higher highs, and Fisher Transform makes lower highs. So again, uh, the normalized distribution is not supporting this continued move up and comes on down. Same down here now a little bit, especially on this one. Okay, go into a channel here, get a little higher low here, a much higher low there. And boom, off she goes to the races. So not too bad. Now, nothing's going to work all the time. I do not recommend you use this or any one indicator to make money. I don't believe there is any one indicator that in isolation will make you money. But this might be part of your toolbox that you might want to consider. Let's look at a couple of other examples. Now, here's another example that's very interesting. So here we uh, have our, our three lows here. And we looked at this pattern here. It comes back down now. Does not make it to this low. And yet we make a lower low on the Fisher Transform. So very interesting that that would actually make a lower low. Now, anything around zero, uh, I personally consider it neutral. So what we're doing is we're looking for extreme moves. Okay, because again, there's no, this is more like... Um, yeah, I'm not using this to do trend trades, in other words. Not using this for trend trading, not really using it for um, directional trading in the sense of long-term direction. Really looking at it more to pre-identify potential extreme moves, and I do mean extreme. So we've seen four to the upside as an extreme move, two to the downside, or negative two has been an extreme move on this indicator through this period of time. And that will change, by the way, through different market periods. 
Now, here, of course, is the famous or infamous February high of last year. And so, again, we had um, a little extra, a little warning here. Again, that's close enough for government to work. But here we get a more dramatic difference. Higher high on price, much lower high on um, the Fisher Transform Index. Just mark that up for you there real easy. Make it obvious to you. Okay, so again, that could have been a warning that, and well, it actually went down pretty darn good. Now, look at this. So we come down, I remember this, boom, 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 came down, came back up. Could this be considered an oversold area based on Fisher Transform? The answer is yes, because remember, it's been going down to around negative two pretty consistently. And now this is the first time we've seen that it went to negative four for a long, 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 long time. And that's why I say we're looking for, or at least I look for, extremes when using this indicator. I'm not looking for um, confirmation. Uh, I'm looking for, okay, where are we getting like way out of whack? And by the way, way out of whack <laughs> is relative, relative to recent data. So let's see if we can get over here. So again, there you go. Okay, boom, big move up. So now we got a before and we got to six. Let me draw that on there for you. So a lot, we've been up around four, 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 and that seemed pretty extreme. Whoa, we got up to over six. Okay, so again, extreme move, and that's where I would be looking to say, okay, now this I like, uh, this I would actually call overbought. Bounding indicators, I don't believe they really provide overbought, oversold signals, but this does. That is an overbought signal. And it's because it's not based on just artificial floors and ceilings. One last example I want to show you, and this just further um, confirms what I was saying before. But if we're not getting an, oh, a really extreme move, I, I don't do anything with this indicator. So let's see, for example, here we get, uh, well, these highs here are just a little above three, not above four even, as we saw before. Market keeps going up market keeps going up. And yeah, maybe a little swing high there, a little swing high there, there, but not much. So these levels are not overbought. Again, we're looking for really extremes. This to me, coming to zero and going back above it, that I don't really consider that at all. Now this one, yes, because remember the normal um, move down has been to negative two, and now we're below negative two, so I would consider that oversold. And it's all relative. So again, real quickly, don't to get too enamored with these numbers. There's no limit on these numbers. What we're looking for is the, the highs on the Fisher Transform indicator in relation to itself in recent history. Real quick, we'll do one more example, just because people often ask me if this can be used, uh, or any indicator can be used on other markets. So I brought up the Forex um, Euro US dollar. See that it has moved down uh, quite dramatically during this time. And uh, sure enough, now the Fisher Transform gets down to negative four, which is pretty darn extreme. Okay, comes back up off of that. And uh, boom, goes to the moon, makes breaks all of these highs over here. So again, yes, that I would consider over, and again, remember, it's relative to itself over a given period of time. So yes, that I would consider to be oversold. And if we go back here, you know, this is, again, actually, I should do this more narrow here, just to catch at that little bottom there. So relative to itself in the past, that is very, very, very oversold. And you can look for these big moves. Now, again, don't use this in, in isolation. So you got to use, I would definitely make sure you're using some sort of trending tool for sure, a momentum tool to measure the strength of the market moves. And so, and then also a cycle indicator that times your entries, uh, just because one line crosses another here does not mean that's when you should trade the, the slower line, it's just a moving average. So um, I use my cycle indicator, which I'll be happy to share that with you for free. It's just a modification of an indicator that's already in our chart. So just go on over to um, indicatorwebinar.com. Check it out. I'll give you a tutorial uh, how to set it up on your charts and how to use it.